So I realized I've told you what happened, but I haven't quite told you why it happened. So here goes. It all started with a call. Hello? Okay, it was a text. Okay, it was a DM, I'll be honest. And that DM came from my friend Jonathan Morrison. And Jonathan happens to be one of the best tech YouTubers out there as well as an incredible music producer. And we had been DMing back and forth for a couple months, just like, hey, I really like your stuff on your channel. Hey, back at you, brother, I really love your stuff. But randomly in the midst of all that, he DMs me one day while I'm at lunch with one of my friends and he says, hey Mike, here's my number, text me right now. And I was like, Okay, that sounds cool. He says to me, yo, I'd love it if you came out to LA to see the Dolby setup I have going out here with my friends at Apogee. And I was like, Dolby, you mean that thing they have at the movies that they have the nerve to charge you extra for? I mean, I don't know much about that, but I'm kind of curious, I'm kind of intrigued, and I love your channel, so let's do this. And he's like, dope. Also, by the way, a little guitarist named Tim Henson will be joining us. And I went, Tim Henson, you mean like Tim Henson, Tim Henson, like Henson Tim, Tim Henson, Tim Henson from Pentatonix. Wait. Wrong band. So I packed my bags. Dude, do people wear socks in LA? I hop into the Uber. Hey, can you actually take the highway? I think it'll be faster. And I take off for my first real ever trip to LA. I mean, it was like a dream come true. And as soon as I get there, everything starts happening at once, right? I'm meeting all sorts of new friends. I'm seeing this Dolby Atmos room being built in real time and I'm even getting to like be a part of it helping to make it. So it's like one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. They actually built the room in like a 24 to 36 hour period, which is absolutely insane. But then the day actually came. The day came and I remember seeing Tim just walk into Apogee Studios and thinking to myself like, Wow, he's a real person standing five feet away from me. You see, what Jonathan had told me was that me and Tim actually had something in common. We were both gonna be seeing this Dolby Atmos studio setup for the first time ever. But what I didn't know yet was that Tim actually had a side quest, a term that a lot of you video game nerds might know of. There was like a secondary mission that he was on. And to give you some context, like I said before, this Dolby Atmos studio just wasn't in some random alleyway in LA, it was actually at Apogee Studio. And for those of you who know about the audio world, Apogee is really known for making like symphonies and audio interfaces, just stuff for engineers and producers. But Tim was actually going to be demoing a completely new song that no one had ever heard before on Apogee's new product called the Jam X. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I've heard Polyphia's records before. I know that Remember That You Will Die had just released. They've blown me away before. For, but like how good could this thing really be and then he did this Now, cool thing, if you had told me a year before that, that like I would be in a room with Tim Henson listening to a new song for the first time, I wouldn't have believed you. So it's just absolutely insane. And I was completely shook, like completely shook. I didn't know what was happening. So Tim leaves, he goes back to his studio, his tour, wherever he was going next. And there are two main conclusions that I feel like I had gotten from the experience. Number one, seeing Tim in person, he's the real deal. I mean, just seeing him noodle on his guitar, you could already tell that this dude was a level above next level. He was in that legendary stratosphere on the guitar. And number two, I was like, what was that thing? And they were like, Mike, it's called the Jam X. I was like, Jam Max? And they were like, no, Jam X. And they actually did have to correct me a bunch. And so I kept thinking about it. I was like, huh, Jam X, that seems pretty cool. So I end up flying home as well. I go back to my apartment. I keep making videos. I do my thing. I'm practicing guitar. And I actually end up getting another call from Jonathan. And this time he asks me, one of the coolest things that I've ever been asked to do, he asked me if I would be the guitar guy for their pre nam party and be their like official Jam X guy for NAM. And all I could say was, of course, absolutely. I would love to do this. This is the biggest honor ever. So again, I pack my stuff. Dude, do people wear socks in LA? 
I got into the Uber. Hey, can you actually take the highway? I think it'll be faster. I went to the airport and I flew back out to LA. Although it was exciting, I was a little bit nervous. I mean, all of these people are gonna see me play guitar live for the first time. There's no second take. Fortunately, I got to be with my friend Jeremy and demo it with him. He's a fantastic bass player. We sat at opposite ends of the room and we just started jamming. We just started going at it. And I had prepped for that before I had used the Jam X at home just to get familiar with it and see what it could do. But it was the first time in a live setting that I could see like with the zero latency, just what it could do. And I could see like playing with another person what like the three stages of compression could actually do and getting to actually see in the moment as well built-in analog compression and in case you want to see what I was talking about here's how that kind of sounds So I didn't really know what to call that track, so I'm gonna name it something very random off the top of my head, like maybe, I don't know, Gabriella Wilson, and maybe one day she'll wanna come on the channel. If you ever wanna come on the channel, you would be the featured guest. So like I was saying, the cool thing is that you get three levels of analog compression, which is one of the things that I've noticed that a lot of interfaces are doing nowadays, pretty much everyone, and I guess that's why you would wanna put it in something, especially for guitar players, because with compression nowadays, for a lot of like bedroom players, I wouldn't necessarily think that outboard gear is like your first priority but actually having that option with analog compression or with compression in your interface and getting it as close to your final product as you can before having to do anything in your DAW. Like I was saying, you have your first setting. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much the full story. That's how it happened. That's how I met Tim Henson. That's how I discovered this little guy right here. And that's how I gave him a guitar lesson and taught him everything that he knows. And in all seriousness, thank you so much to Jonathan and to my friends at Apogee for bringing me out. It was really an honor to be able to demo this thing at NAMM and to now be able to see it like in real time with the compression. If you want to know anything more about the JamX, links are in the description. Make sure to check it out. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most important of all, like most importantly, have a fantastic day. Yeah, seeing Tim Henson in person was like surreal. Like as a player, just watching him noodle, I remember just thinking to myself like, Oh my gosh, like y you see him play that fast on screen and it doesn't look real and then you see him do it in person and it still doesn't look real just when he's like noodling.